This is example four, direct shear test. And for this example, you have four sets of normal force and then the corresponding shear force at failure. And then we're going to find the shear strength parameters. Also predict the shear force required to cause failure for different normal stress. This is a dry sandy soil. So immediately we know for dry sandy soil, the C prime parameter is zero. Okay. So this problem really is asking for phi prime. We know the size of the specimen, two by two, and the height is 0.75. So this is height. And this two by two gives you the cross-sectional area. Okay. So cross-sectional area A is two times two. It's two for a uh, four inch square, and you can convert that to square feet, which is 0 0.0278 square feet. So that's a cross-sectional area of the specimen. And then let's calculate the normal stress and shear stress at failure, and then find the shear strength parameter. So this normal stress, sigma prime, okay. So if I call the normal force, so let's give it some name. And then the shear stress at failure is called this S here. Okay. So this normal stress is basically Fn, the normal force divide, divided by cross-sectional area. Okay. So this gives us, uh, so you use the normal force divided by 0 0.0278, that's 720. 1080, 2520, and 3600. So that's normal force, basically force divided by area. And then the shear stress at failure, we call this tau F. And this tau F is the shear force at failure divided by A. So let's call this SF for failure. So if you use shear force at failure and divide that by A, so this is shear stress at failure, 432, 658.8, and 2163.6. So that's the normal stress and shear stress at failure. And once you have these two sets of stresses. So that's your normal and shear stress. The next is basically to plot them a shear stress versus normal stress plot. And that's what's shown on this graph here. So there are four data points. Each of these data points is a combination of sigma prime and tau f. So that's basically these uh, last two columns from the previous table. So we're plotting this sigma prime and tau f, and we have four data points. So we plot them on this graph, and then fit a straight line. So this is fitted straight line. That's a more coolant failure envelope. This is a dry sand. We mentioned that C prime is zero for dry sand. So when you fit this straight line, it needs to pass this origin. Okay. This is tau f equals to sigma prime tangent of phi prime. So that's a function of this straight line. And once you get this straight line fitted, then the angle of this inclination angle of this straight line is phi prime. So you can measure this phi prime or you can pick two data points to calculate the slope. So either way, and this is, this is part A. So from failure envelope, C prime is zero and C prime is 32 degrees. So that is a shear strength parameter from this direct shear test, that's part A. And then for part B, for part B, we are given a new normal stress 
of 2000 PSF, and we're going to predict what force is required to cause the specimen to fail. And for this part, we know sigma prime is 2000 PSF, and we are asked to find the shear force. So we're going to find shear force at failure. And to do this, we first need to find the shear stress at failure, then multiply that by cross-sectional area, we get the force. So simply just plug in this failure criterion, uh, more coolant failure criterion. And these 32 degrees, what we just found from part A. So this is basically that phi prime angle. And this is that sigma prime. Given this normal stress, we can calculate the shear stress at failure. This is 1249.7 PSF. So that's the shear stress at failure corresponding to a 2000 PSF normal stress. And then that shear force at failure, SF, is tau F times cross-sectional area A. In cross-sectional area A, we just calculate from part one. So this is 1249.7 times 0 0.0278 square feet. And that's 34.7 pound. So that's a shear force required to fail the specimen at a normal stress of 2000. 